Hey everyone, welcome back to Ontario Gardening. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy bird seed breathe for outside in this winter weather that we're having. So the tools that you're going to need for this is a big mixing bowl, a bundt cake pan, a spatula, and you're either going to need rope or twine, string, ribbon, whatever can support that um, wreath wherever you're going to be putting it in your yard. As for the ingredients of the wreath, you're only going to need a few things. You're going to need eight cups of your bird seed that you use, some non-stick cooking spray such as Pam or whatever you have, two packets of gelatin. So usually in a box you get four packets. You're only going to need two, six tablespoons of light corn syrup, a cup and a half of white flour, and a cup of lukewarm water, um, enough to melt the corn syrup into. Optional ingredients that you could use would be things such as raisins, cranberries, uh, raw sunflowers, raw pumpkin seeds to decorate the front of your wreath. That's optional. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can make just the straight um, bird seed, seed wreath. A lot of people just do that just for looks. I'll do one without and one with just to kind of show you guys. But the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get our ingredients mixed up and move along. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your cooking spray and we're going to spray the inside of that bundt pan generously and make sure that nothing's going to be able to stick to that pan. It's also at this point, if you would like, and you're going to be using anything to decorate the front of your wreath, you would sprinkle it in now. Um, as that's going to be the front of your wreath and we'll display those pieces. So whatever you have, the cranberries, raisins, whatever, go ahead and put those in now. If you're not using anything extra, just continue on to the next step, which is grabbing your bowl, putting that bun pan off to the side, grabbing our big bowl, adding that cup of lukewarm water and like I said we want to just make sure it's warm enough for the gelatin and the corn syrup to kind of dissolve into there we've got our two packs of gelatin we're just gonna put that in there and we're gonna mix it around with a spatula I find for this process using a spatula is the best it's non-stick um, and once you get mixing things around it's really gonna help to move everything around so get the gelatin mixing in there and once it's just kind of lightly incorporated we are going to add our six tablespoons of light corn syrup. So I did my first five off camera and there is number six. And again, we're going to take our spatula and we are just mixing that around into the mixture. So at this point, we are pretty much good to add those remaining ingredients. Okay, so go ahead and add in your one and a half cups of flour. And then I would say just start with two cups of birdseed because you're going to need eight in total. And just start mixing that around and incorporating it into those wet ingredients. So we've got two cups in. Let's add another two cups. So this is four. Let's go for six. Six. It's getting a little tougher to stir now and the last two will make eight. So we have stirred it really well. Make sure you're to scrape down the sides and right to the bottom because you're not wanting to see really any more of that flour. You're wanting to kind of mix it all together making sure it's equal parts wet. Nothing. There's no dry pockets. Everything's really mixed well and it's going to be like a wet granola consistency. And you are good at that point. It's literally done. We are now going to transfer it to that bundt pan. So let's go ahead and do that. I will do it off camera so that I don't drop this camera. Okay, so at this point we have it in our bundt pan. Now you can use your hand or your hand inside a Ziploc baggie similar to when you would do Rice Krispies because we want to press it down firmly into this mold. You're wanting to make sure to get it all inside of the edges that go along in here to the bottom especially if you've added anything to the bottom like to the front to decorate the front you're going to want this to press into that so that your front is nicely decorated so go ahead and make sure that's pressed in super firmly and it's all nice and tight in there and then i will show you one last thing 
Okay, so I have it packed down pretty tightly. Um, I've got it as even as I could in this pan. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty deep bundt pan. So you have the option to split the uh, mixture in half and do two shallower wreaths if you think that that would be better for you. It's totally up to you. Um, if you have any leftover mixture, because I don't want to fill it right to the brim, well, I have a little bit left over. So what you could potentially do is take the leftovers, um, roll it into balls with your hand, throw it on some parchment paper and make little tiny balls or whatever you want to do with those. You could use the leftover. I mean, you don't want to waste anything. So um, we're going to leave this to sit for 24 hours. So I'm going to put mine in the fridge because it does have gelatin in it. So I mean, of course, anything in, that it can be refrigerated is going to be better. So go ahead and pop it in the fridge. We're going to leave it in there for 24 hours. And at that point, it should slip right out and make our wreath. Um, again, if you have two of them, uh, you can go ahead or the balls, you can just throw those in the fridge beside as well. And I do want to note that if you're making these like more than one at a time, um, like if you're giving them for gifts or you want some in the future, once they're done and ready, you could pop them in some saran wrap and put them in the freezer. Um, but we'll get there when we get there. So I will show you the finished product after 24 hours. We'll pop it out and we'll go outside and we'll hang it for the birdies. So at this point, we should be able to tip this over and it's going to slide right out. It's been 24 hours and then we can attach our string or our ribbon. So I really should have turned my flash on so you can see this. But when I flipped it over, see what I mean about how when you put things on the bottom, that becomes the front of your wreath and that's the decoration. So that is the decoration here. And, now, and again, like I said, this is a really, really thick wreath. I highly suggest like for if you if this is too big for you um, to do it in half next time. But this is a pretty good size really is now depending on the size you do you're going to want that uh, string or ribbon or twine to be nice and heavy heavy duty enough to hold it but you are just going to put your string through the hole and loop it around and we will go and get this thing i'm going to use a different um, string other than this because this is heavier than i thought but we're going to loop it around and let's go bring it outside and here we are hanging outside ready for the birds to enjoy so it's really that easy to make a bird seed wreath you just need a couple of things we will talk to you soon when we make other stuff for our homestead bye